so welcome students to a new lecture of electronic section in this section we will study about the ce amplifier characteristic input and output and what can we conclude from the characteristics now this characteristic i have told you in the lecture for diodes that this is a simple voltage current relationship graph it shows graphically how the voltage how the current changes with voltage now this characteristic is the most important part when you are studying the uh, c amplifier or any amplifier configuration and it gives you an idea how to use the uh, ampli c transistor or any transistor configuration for amplification or for some other purpose there are other uses of transistors also other than amplification i will continue this in the next lectures so how to use the circuit how to use the transistor what are the different regions how the current varies with the voltage this information is provided by the characteristic basically why we do draw the characteristic or why we are interested in studying the characteristic because we need to know the variation of the output with the input with the input how the output current or voltage varies when the input current or voltage is varying so in any transistor configuration what you have you have three terminals emitter base and collector and i have told you in the previous lecture that emitter base is forward bias and the reverse base is uh, reverse bias and the collector base is reverse biased so there is a transfer of resistance forward biased part has less resistance and reverse biased part has more resistance now when the current or the voltage that is fed to the input how it is varying or how it is affecting the output current or voltage that information is provided by the characteristic curve so in the last lecture we had uh, seen this type of a typical characteristic graph where the collector to emitter voltage is plotted in the x axis the collector current this is output you should remember that this is the output current and these data these graphs are plotted with a fixed value of base current this is a general graph i am not uh, indicating that this graph is for c or cb or cc you can uh, i will tell you in detail about the c because the c transistor configuration is the most used transistor configuration why it is so we will see some aspects of c transistor and this is the collector emitter voltage now when this voltage is varied for each value of uh, base current we get a particular type of graph these are the graph and this is called a family of curves family of curves because it is representing a same transistor i have told you in the previous lecture now from this graph we can conclude we can um, obtain a large amount of information they are very interesting and they are related to the operation of the transistor now let us calculate now let us uh, see how a typical graph can be used to calculate the parameters of interest i have told you about some parameters like alpha beta and gamma these are the parameters that are of interest in a transistor circuit alpha beta gamma transistor parameters and these parameters their values they are basically ratios so they are don't have any unit alpha beta gamma are transistor parameters that can tell you about the functioning of the transistor or the functioning of the circuit now if you have this kind of a graph how can you calculate beta from the graph the corresponding circuit diagram that was used to calculate this graph is this one this is the circuit diagram here you can see you have you see you have an ammeter that is measuring the base current an ammeter is collect, uh, measuring the collector current there is a voltmeter that is uh, reading the voltage between the collector and the emitter terminal and this is the battery this is the biasing battery by changing this variable resistance you can control the current passing through the base and you can change the base current to take different types of readings and this is the variable battery or the potential divider arrangement that is used to uh, change the potential between c and e now let us calculate the parameter beta 
this is the parameter beta that is of interest for the time being and we can use the relations mathematical relations to calculate alpha also now let us consider that we have chosen let me show you the graph again here so that it will be easy for you and i am again telling you this is a general graph i will with the with reference to this graph i will explain you the c output and input characteristic this is the graph now let us consider that we have uh, chosen this value of vce let me show with a red mark we have chosen this value of vce that is 8 volt corresponding to this value of uh, collector emitter voltage the collector current is 8 milli amperes and the base current is 60 micro amperes so this is the information this is what you obtain from the circuit this is what you obtain from the experimental diagram experimental arrangement now <coughs> what we do is we, we fix the value of base current which is 60 micro ampere you can see here this is the 60 micro ampere so by definition beta is the ratio of collector current to base current and now this beta is calculated as 80 milli ampere by 60 micro ampere and this is the value 133 now we can choose another value of base current from this graph suppose i am choosing this 80 micro ampere and here also we can calculate the parameter beta in that case beta will be different so what we conclude is that beta varies from transistor to transistor it is a transistor property and beta value, uh, values vary with different values of ic or you can say ib they are also different so this is one conclusion that we have come across now this is the way that we can use to study the output characteristic of different configurations now let us start our discussion for the <coughs> ce transistor and we have two types of characteristics means voltage current relation voltage current graph one is the input the other is the output now this is the basic circuit diagram that is used to study the input and output characteristics. Basically this is the input characteristic graph, this is the C configuration, how can you identify because this emitter port is grounded. Now this is the variable resistance that is used to change the current flowing to the base, base part, this is VBB means it is pro providing the potential to the base. This is VCE for forward biasing the collector emitter terminal and this is VBE for sorry VCE for reverse biasing the collector and emitter terminal and VBE for forward biasing the base emitter terminal. This is the variable resistance and this is the VCC collector that is changing that is providing biasing to the collector terminal. This is the input characteristic, input characteristic circuit diagram. Now the input characteristic means that it is showing the voltage current relationship between the input current and voltage. Now what we do input current input characteristic it is obtained by plotting the base current you take on the vertical axis and the base emitter voltage on the x axis. Remember this base, base emitter is forward biased and VCE at a fixed value this VCE collector emitter voltage it provides the reverse biasing to the collector emitter terminal. Now when you plot the graph, the forward characteristic appears for different values of VCE. You fix the VCE from this arrangement. Suppose you fix VCE at 0, you measure IB and VBE, plot the graph. Then you take another value, suppose 10 volts or 2 volts or 4 volts. Again you plot the base current and base emitter voltage. Now what you see that when uh, for different values of uh, VCE these types of curves are obtained and from this curve when you have studied diode characteristic you can easily conclude that this is a forward biased diode and it is quite logical because the base emitter terminal is forward biased. Now from this curve since this is a voltage current curve you can calculate the resistance also because we have been doing this since we have we study the ohm's law now the input resistance that can be obtained since it is not a perfect straight line you take the slope at two points 
and you measure the change in VBE and the change in base current at, con at some constant VCE. This provides you the input resistance. Now let us try to understand this graph or let us try to find an explanation for this graph. This is another plot of the same input characteristic of C amplifier. Now there are two values have been taken for VCE. One is the VCE 0 volts and other is the VCE greater than 0 maybe 1, 2, 4, 6, 8 depends on the experimental setup you have. <coughs> if someone asks you to explain this graph, how will you explain? The first thing is that VCE is 0 volt means collector emitter voltage is 0 volt. You have to remember that the collector emitter is reverse bias. So reverse biasing is 0 volt means there is no reverse biasing. The collector emitter is showing 0 volt. The emitter base is forward biased. So it is nothing but a forward biased PN junction diode. Collector emitter voltage is 0. And you get a, this, this, this sort of a graph. This is the knee voltage, it depends on the semiconductor that is the being used, it is silicon or it is germanium. This is the knee voltage or cutting voltage. Now what happens when you change the VCE from 0 to 1, 2, 4, 6, 8 or 10 volts or 5 volts, this graph is shifting to the right. Right shift. Now why this is occurring? Why it is shifting to the right? What happens at the higher values of VCE, the reverse biasing of the collector base, as you are increasing VCE from zero, the reverse biasing is increasing. The reverse biasing of the collector base is increasing and this causes the depletion region width to increase. This is a particular type of phenomena I am telling you later in this lecture. Now what happens, the base current IB decreases, so the current shifts to the right. As you go on increasing the VCE, the current, uh, the graph goes on shifting towards the right direction. And many times it happens that this is the VCE zero in the during the experiment, and you observe that your VCE for the next value, VCE is greater than zero for any value greater than zero, the graph is right to this VCE for equal to zero. What I am trying to say is that if this is VCE at 0, now you increase VCE to 1 volt or 2 volt and you see that this is the 1 volt graph. It is not shifting to right, it is shifting to left. In that case, it is better to take VC or fix VC to some other value because conventionally it is required that the graph for VCE greater than 0 volt, it should shift to left, not to the right. It should shift, shift to the right, not to the left. So if, suppose you are fixing it 1 volt and it is appearing in the left of VCE equal to 0, it is better you take some other value, 2, 4, 3, 6, 8, any other value. Reject this value, VCE is equal to 1 volt. It is not necessary that you should increase VCE as 1, 2, 3, 4. It depends on the experimental arrangement and the experimental box you have. You can take it in units of 2, 2, 4, 6, 8. That provides, that shows you graph shifting to the right, not to the left. So this is the input characteristic and it is quite simple. It is same as the forward bias PN junction diode. Now the output characteristic, what you, we are interested in, if we are interested in the output the current or voltage because that is going to be used in the device whatever device you have attached to the transistor or whatever circuit you have attached the transistor with and for what purpose you are using now this characteristic is con plotted by taking the collector current of course this is the output current with the variation of VCE at constant value of base current this is the output characteristic this is how we obtain the output characteristic. Now this ca output characteristic is the most important part of the C transistor or any transistor. The variation of collector current with VCE, remember VCE is the collector emitter voltage, collector end is reverse biased, emitter end is forward biased. Now at fixed values of base current. 
Now when you have plot the graph, you get this kind of region and there are three regions. <coughs> Sorry, saturation, cutoff and in the in between there is the active region. I am coming to each region respectively. Now let us study this graph. What you are doing, you are plotting this IC by varying VCE and you have kept IB at some fixed value. Suppose you are taking the base current as Z. Now the base current is the input current in the CE configuration. I have told you in the previous lecture. Now the input current is 0. Input current is 0. At this stage, what should happen is that if the input current is 0, there should not be any current through the collector. But there is, a, there is a collector current at IB equal to 0 through the collector, although the base current is 0. The base current is 0, but there is a collector current flowing. So it means it is something like the input is cut off. The input is not connected. The input is separated, but the collector output is showing non-zero current. This current is designated as ICEO, CE means this end is open, O for open. In this, this situation, it is called cutoff state. Why it is called cutoff state? Because it is the state when the input is cut off, but there is a current is flowing. And this ICEO, open circuit current has a special significance in semiconductor devices. It is called the leakage current or it is called the dark current and it is due to the minority charge carriers that are flowing due to temperature effects. I will discuss in detail the temperature effects on transistor. So this is the state of the transistor when the it is called cutoff. Means now what is happening in this case base current is zero. The base emitter terminal that is forward bias and input current is zero. This means the situation is of reverse bias and the collector base output terminal collector base is already reverse biased. So in this case what happens that both the terminals the emitter base and the collector base they are both in the reverse bias state and the transistor is off means the transistor is a closed switch in this state the sorry open switch it is a open switch it is not conducting at all there is no conduction open switch no conduction suppose you open a switch in a circuit no current will flow this is the state of cutoff now to analyze the output characteristic, we have some equations and these equations I have discussed. These are the equations. I have discussed these equations in the previous lecture, you can see. Them. From the equation, this equation, it is quite clear that if, the, if we have seen that alpha is in the range 0 to 9.95 to 0.99. Now suppose alpha is 0 0.95, you can calculate beta. What do you observe that in the, if, for a, if there is a small change in alpha, suppose alpha group goes from 0 0.95 to 0 0.98, so it is 0 0.03 increase. <coughs> the change in beta that will occur, it is 49.5. You can relate, you can see this uh, equation, you can see this relation. I told you that alpha and beta equations, they are relating the two Configurations, beta is generally defined for the common base uh, configuration. So this is the relation that is very important in solving numericals and that, that can provide you with a large amount of information. Now when VC is, is, is very low, this is what, so this cutoff is one extreme, extreme situation means there cannot be worse or there cannot be better than that situation. That is extreme. I will show you diagrammatically. Now when VC is very low, ideally zero, we have considered the cutoff region, the IB equal to zero. Now VCE, 
द कलेक्टर एमिटर कलेक्टर इज देयर कलेक्टर बाय बेसिस रिवर्स बायस नाउ दिस कलेक्टर एमिटर वोल्टेज इफ दिस इज वेरी लो आइडियली सपोज दिस वैल्यू इज जीरो दिस वन वी आर कंसीडरिंग दिस रीजन आइडियली इट इज जीरो नाउ व्हाट हैपेंस व्हाट इज सीन हियर द ट्रांजिस्टर इज सेड टू बी इन सैचुरेशन रीजन दिस इज अ common term this is the terminological definition saturation region now saturation what does saturation means you cannot increase that any that quantity further that is called saturation now the emitter base was forward biased and now the c reverse bias because ce collector voltage is also zero almost zero that reverse biasing this reverse bias means negative polarity now we are changing the vc and it is coming to zero it is going to be in the forward state so in this case the saturation region is reached and the transistor it behaves as a closed switch means the maximum amount of current is flowing maximum current is flowing this is the closed switch configuration or saturation region now is this saturation region required for transistor action because it is appearing to be a very good state so what we have seen till now that the transistor if we have this transistor it has two basic states or i should write states of transistor and these are defined by the biases now the at one end you have the cut off open switch the other other extreme you have the saturation saturation closed switch here the transistor is not conducting at all here the saturation region it is fully conducting you cannot cannot get any more values if saturation means you cannot increase that situation or that condition further now this is saturated the switch is closed maximum current is flowing there is no chance of increasing the current we can logically see that this is not required this is not a very good state not very good because it is not conducting at all now is this full conduction required i will say no because transistor is used for amplification purpose it is not used for a situation that you get the maximum of everything what do we require in a transistor we require some intermediate situation that for that the output changes with input output changes with input so we need require something between these two extremes we do not require these two extremes right for amplification for amplification this is required for amplification this is not required this is not required these are switch this that is why these are the switching states cut off and saturation they are the switching states they are at this state the transistor is behaving like a switch open switch and close switch open switch no current close switch maximum current you cannot increase that current further but what we require for amplification is a state where the output changes with input or the output current responds to a change in input <coughs> this is required now you can again obtain the beta value from the graph by observing the change in the collector current and observing the change in the base current it is not beta it is base it is base current this ratio we require now if there is no change in ic no change in for any change in base current no change is ic in observed then it is of no use for amplification so in a current in a c configuration the current voltage relationship as shown by this diagram it is this diagram this is relating this is the kirchhoff's law voltage law we are we are considering this equation 
सो दिस इज द कलेक्टर एमिटर वोल्टेज दिस इज द कलेक्टर बायसिंग वोल्टेज दिस इज द कलेक्टर करेंट एंड दिस इज द लोड रेजिस्टेंस दिस इक्वेशन विल बी ऑफ वेरी this equation will be of extreme use we will when we will study the load line concept now what happens the most important region of the transistor let us discuss this we have discussed two extreme cases this one the saturation one extreme this is closed switch this is open switch in this between in this in the region in between these two states there is a re region which is called the active region now why what is the meaning of active what is activity the closed switch and the open switch the cutoff and the saturation they are not showing any activity activity means the output should respond or it should show some change when the input is changed if it is not showing any change then it is not active here you are sleeping here you are fully um, awake but you are doing nothing if you are totally awake and you are doing nothing you are just sitting idle it is the same situation as you are sleeping because your activity is zero this is the reason where the transistor is active how it is active the region lies between the saturation and the cutoff region it is called active why it is called active this is the region where the transistor shows a change transistor shows an activity in this region what you have what happens that the transistor responds to the change in the base current the in this region the emitter base junction it is in the forward bias and collector base is in the reverse bias what happens in this case the transistor action takes place transistor action means the output current responds most sensitively to an input signal this is called active region because the output current output current responds most sensitively to the input current that is why this is the activity this is that is why it is called active in the saturation region the output current is not responding to the change in input current so it is not active it is the maximum state you cannot move further you cannot make any further changes this is called that is why it is called the active region and the transistor acts as a, as an amplifier in this region in the active region in the active region the transistor the com the let me write it in terms of the biasing the base emitter base emitter junction is forward biased less resistance and collector base is reverse biased reverse biased the transistor performs transistor performs amplification amplification in the active region in the active region this is the most important region for the, of the output characteristic for transistor action in the active region we have the following equations and these equations i have told you this is the ce co it is the open circuit or the minority charge current and we have a relation of alpha from this we have obtained this relation you can check the last video and these are the equations that are required now let me tell you uh, at last the most important effect in the transistor is the early effect 
and it was named after its inventor James M. Early. This is the increase in the space charge region due to increase in the base collector voltage VCB. When it is increasing, the depletion region is increasing. As a result, the base weight, the width of the base is also changing. This dependency of the base weight on the collector emitter voltage is called the early effect. As the reverse biasing voltage is increasing, the base weight decreases due to the early effect. And this is very important when you are studying the output characteristic. The, the, it is the early effect that causes a large change in beta due to a small change in alpha. How it is doing you can think on this. In the next lecture we will see the reasons of early effect or the factors of early effect and more about the output characteristic, the concept of faithful amplification and what happens to different biasing voltages AC and DC. For the time being stay connected, ask your queries in the comment section and please watch, like and share and subscribe the videos. It will help you more, it will help you more than me. It is for your purpose. I have told you many times these videos are for your purpose. So if you have any queries then please ask in the comment section. I will try to resolve the issues. Thank you.